dear Ambassador Phillips, dear colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, let me first of all thank you very much for inviting me to open uh, uh, this forum and to discuss with you on this about, <coughs> sorry, winter is coming now, really. <laughs> Um, to discuss uh, um, about a very crucial question, I think one of the most crucial questions we have to face in these times, the complex relationship between uh, research, science, innovation, and uh, the market. But I want to say in addition to the title of this forum, uh, to society too. I think it's the right time to do that. After a long period, more or less 20 years of intensive technology transfer policies, which uh, produced mixed results. So it's the time to, to make a balance and to judge which are really the results we had from this uh, uh, long-term period of uh, cooperation. I shall start my introduction by sharing one of my deepest uh, beliefs. And uh, this belief is a very simple one. In my opinion, there is a strong and very direct co correlation between a country's freedom of research and its ability to innovate. In other terms, science means freedom and autonomy. Freedom and autonomy. There is no science without freedom and autonomy. It's a very strong assessment, I know. Blue Sky Research is essential for citizens and for companies, for creativity and competitiveness, for development and growth. Both the private and the public sector should not forget to invest more in basic research, as it is, it is socially and economically so beneficial. And I think that all of us here can share this assumption. Dear Ambassador, I believe it's not by chance that one of the biggest uh, uh, company, uh, one of the biggest American startup incubator, Y Combinator, decided uh, some, some months ago, a few months ago, to shift its activity from simply creating new ventures to invest, to fund basic research. The rationale between, be behind this choice was pretty simple. To face and to solve the world new big challenges, entrepreneurship alone is not enough. It's not enough more, no more. We need research. We need that companies invest directly in basic research, even without a direct market uh, result, immediately. Many successful uh, inventions, uh, in other ways, uh, we, we know very well, uh, all of us uh, can uh, have some idea about this topic, are the result of research that had no apparent commercial, uh, um, commercial uh, outputs. The website is one of the best uh, instances of this kind of uh, process. However, not all the basic science research produces invention or innovation. We, we know, uh, as scholars, I mean, as professors, we know very well also that, uh, that phase of the kind, even when they have the potential to do that. Europe experiences the so-called European paradox. I want to summarize the paradox, the mixed match between a strong basic research tradition, also since ancient times, to our, our modern times, and the relatively modest innovation performance. This is a fact. This is uh, absolutely the uh, relevance of uh, our, our uh, condition today. Italy, inside the European framework, with the exception of some uh, very important and very well-known selected sectors is experiencing a somewhat, a somehow disappointing innovation performance. And this is exactly the reason why we should put our best efforts, our best energies to improve the exploitation of the country's scientific base. I think that a brand new approach to knowledge transfer has to be put in place. 
moving, moving from the linear top-down model to a clear top-down model of knowledge exploitation to a new one, which is uh, in some way I should define a society-based model. That means, in other words, to put society, societal challenges, social accountability of research and innovation at the very center of the stage, at the very center of the political agenda. I do think that squeezing out university of research institutes and, or research institutes uh, um, to generate results that would fertilize the industrial system it's not, uh, uh, is not enough, it's not more enough. And uh, if we want to give the right answers to the new questions we have to face, to these big challenges, I can mention some of the most uh, relevant, the most uh, well-known climate change, aging society, pollution, migration. If you want to, to find the new, the new and very, very fitting, adequate answers to these new questions, we have to change the model. And we have to improve a new science industry dialogue and a new science society dialogue, what we missed in the recent uh, times of our, of our European but also international uh, context. What we need now is that new model. And uh, in my opinion, uh, I, 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 and I think that uh, if you want to change the model, if you want to introduce uh, new uh, tools in the, not only in the government hands, but also in the, in the academic and the institutes of research hands, we must be able to turn the model upside down and move towards an inclusive innovation approach. It's uh, what uh, we discuss in a very important, in a very uh, exciting, in my opinion, a conference uh, organized by the OECD in Seoul some months ago, last year, 2015. And uh, it's the, the, the new frontier, the new objective, the new, the new purpose we have uh, as uh, developed and not developed countries, both together. Because we, when, we, we, when we talk about Ebola, when we talk about uh, migration, when we talk about uh, uh, aging society, is not, uh, there, there is no more we and them. There is no more something which is different between the different parts of the world. We have the same problems and we have to face these problems, putting together our best energies, our best talents. The idea of this conference, the simple idea of this conference in Seoul, I try to, to, to summarize, is that a model driven by societal challenges and based on social accountability of research and innovation is, is also, should be also more efficient in the exploitation of scientific results and can give also more and, and more direct uh, results uh, in terms of uh, economic growth. So the question of market, society and uh, science uh, is in some way the same question we have to, to face. This model has a title now as a title uh, which is uh, very well now known at international le level, and is inclusive growth. That means uh, a model of growth that is geared towards extensive participation and satisfying the needs of the greatest number of people we can, of the largest number of people we can. And if we stretch, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a linguist, uh, a general linguist as a scholar, so. I put a great attention to the, to the meaning of words. If we stretch the most we can, the meaning, the sense of this notion of inclusion to a broader definition of stakeholders, we must include not only poor people, it's the, the, the simplest uh, uh, meaning we can see in this word, but we also put, uh, we, we also include, we also see behind this word the elderly, the disabled, 
the migrants, and all kinds of the so-called disadvantaged people. And the message from science and research, from political uh, uh, responsibility we have in our hands, and also from companies, from industries, is exactly this one. We have to, to, to give to the most part, to the largest part of people in the world, the best solutions to these big problems we have to face. So the inclusive innovation challenge has in some way much to do with economic policies, but most of our hopes, most of our uh, opportunity to give the right answers are, and to have a more sustainable devel development uh, lie in science, technology, and education. These three basic pillars of our agenda are in some way the, the, the basis, the real ground of our opportunity to, to get a better society. In Europe, we have some good instances uh, in this, uh, which, which in my opinion uh, are going to the right direction. I'm thinking of the Horizon 2020 framework. Uh, you know very well, it's the first uh, decisive step towards a new generation of challenges, so problem-driven research policy. And also the political agenda now, uh, the political agenda we need if we want to go to this direction and to bridge the gap between science, innovation, and society is quite clear. I want to mention, in conclusion of my, this short, or this my short introduction, I want to list the basic pillars of this agenda. I see five points, which are, in my opinion, the crucial points, the crucial, uh, the crucial challenges we have. First, we need alignment and integration of nation, national research agendas and global large-scale societal problems. I already mentioned what I'm referring to. Second, accountability of science. We need to connect, to effectively connect more and better science and society, industries and uh, universities and institutes of research. We can't separate, no more separate uh, the different fields of uh, work and uh, we have to consider that it's not a simply a question of multidisciplinary approach. This is, a, this is a, a new and in some way absolutely necessary uh, per, um, perspective we have in the academic uh, and uh, research um, system, but it's also a question of putting together these different components of the, uh, the, 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 the society. Third, social innovation. We need, really need social innovation. We should be able to imagine brand new schemes of engagement between uh, science and society by fostering public-private partnerships in applied research as well as in basic research in applied research as well in basic research, and by promoting social innovation as the fundamental engine able to choose the gap between the results of our scientific uh, work and the benefits that uh, are, if they are clearly uh, announced, they are clearly uh, described, which can be perceived by our citizens, by common people who are not members of the scientific community. Fourth, we need innovative public procurement. The pre-commercial procurement could be a useful tool for government. That's the direction we are going to, to move in Italy, for instance, and I am confident that this will become more and more a, a very, a very uh, important and effective uh, way of uh, uh, development for uh, our country. Fifth, this is the last but really not least, human capital. We know very well that to invest, to uh, train, to give the best opportunities we can here and there, everywhere in the world to human capital, to our talents, to our students, to our young people, is the absolutely the key word and the, the, the most important, the most important object we have in our, in our path. 
I think that uh, in this way, it's really necessary to develop a society that can express a higher demand for researchers in both the public and the private sector. You know that in Italy we have also a problem of uh, not so high demand of uh, high qualified uh, students after graduation and researchers. So we have to, to work on this topic in a very, very effective way. And that's exactly what we are working also together with the uh, American Embassy and uh, our uh, United States uh, partners uh, uh, in the university and the, in the institutes of research. I want to mention the very new, the very recent uh, program uh, recently approved by the Italian government. We called it uh, Go For It. And it's a program uh, uh, that will allow about uh, 80 or 90 Italian uh, graduates and PhD every year to spend uh, six months uh, in the world's most relevant innovation hubs, uh, from Silicon Valley to Israel to uh, Singapore, another very, very important hub for uh, research and innovation all over the world. And I think that uh, this is a small piece of a larger and broader puzzle we are trying to, to put together and to build in, this, uh, in these years. So, your Ambassador, uh, just to, 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 to conclude my short introduction uh, and wishing uh, all of you uh, a good and very fruitful work uh, um, here today about these very, very relevant uh, uh, topics you're facing. I want to summarize my thought in a very, very simple message. If we will be able to put together the freedom of science and research, the power of politics, when politics uh, um, uh, takes uh, on his hands uh, uh, its own responsibility can be very, very powerful. And the effectiveness of technologies, I think that we have uh, the right solution for these new ones, for the new questions, uh, the right answers to these big challenges we are around us and we can't neglect if you want really to give and to give to our uh, young people, to our uh, son and daughters and to new generation a better society. I think that's the reason we are working <laughs> in any field of, uh, of our life. Thank you so much.